Hi, this is Ann with Fiber Designs by Ann, and today I'm sharing a new technique that I've developed for painting a little piece of fabric. It's really fun, it's really easy, and I love the results. The things I used were a piece of cardboard. This is thicker than a cereal box and thinner than regular packing boxes. You can experiment, but this it needs to be corrugated. This is very thin, but it is corrugated, and that's kind of important for this design. I also have a piece of foam. This is just from packing, but you want to use something that will cushion when you poke holes through the cardboard and will keep your surface safe. So that's what the foam is for. I have a mist bottle. I'm using Jacquard textile color in a yellow and a fluorescent violet. Also want some containers in case you want to mix your colors or thin them. I have eyedroppers, a container to hold the water for that. A container that I will put water in to rest my brushes in as I work so they don't dry out. I'm using a small stiff brush and a round pointed brush. I maybe want some wipes or paper towel, something sharp. You could use scissors. I have like a stiletto tool here and then a chopstick or something that will make a larger hole than that pointy pointy object. A marker, which is optional. And I had mine when I was uh, drying it, working on it, drying it on, resting on a couple jars. That was not such a good idea. Um, maybe some foam or a cake pan, something that you won't use with food ever, but something to raise your project up. You want to raise it up because it will be dripping uh, as you paint and when you're letting it dry. So you want to be able to have it up off the surface because you'll have paint on both sides of your cardboard. Um, I like to stick some paper towel under my piece as it's drying and dripping, and that is really fun to use for collage and other projects. So that's what I did once I set it to dry. And you'll need a piece of fine cotton fabric. This is fabric that I painted, but you can use any kind of nice, fine, tightly woven cotton fabric. Now to begin, we'll take our cardboard and set it on, this is already partly done, our cardboard and set it onto our foam. And you can just, you can put marks if that works easier for you, or you can just eyeball it and poke them wherever you want. That starter hole, and then we're gonna use something else. If you use scissors, you can push them in and rotate them. I prefer to use the chopstick which we'll use again. So then I put it in and I'll rotate. And I want what I want to happen is for the other side to be split. I want that roughness and the cardboard to spread out a little bit. That's important for the design of this. So once I've done all the holes that I want to do, oops, I'll take my fabric. I'll set it down on top and find a hole that's about centered. It, we'll just pretend my whole piece is, is uh, got holes punched all over it. And then I'm going to start from the center. Center. I'm going to move my phone out of the way. And and this is where you could also put the piece, something to prop it up if it works for you. may or may not be necessary. And you're gonna start in the middle because as you poke the holes, it's gonna pull the fabric. And if you start out here, it'll just keep pulling them out. Whereas if you start in here, you can kind of push the fabric in, in your favor to the next hole. It may bring that hole up when I poke into another hole. If it does, you'll just go back and poke it again. Just kind of, you just sort of give it some fabric so that it doesn't, it's less likely to pull it out, but it's okay if it does. And you do want you do want these lines that all adds to the design. And you're just going to go around and do every hole. And if you see that it brought some of the fabric back up, you'll poke the hole again. And so what you want is to have fabric coming out the back side about a quarter of an inch or so. These would need to be pushed a little bit more. Till it's all, all the holes are covered or all your fabric is taken up into the holes. And then we'll go to the next step. So now the holes are all filled and I'm gonna start in the back. And you can see how these jars were not the best choice for balancing. I'm um, gonna get my small stiff brush 
wet just with a little mist of water and I'm using the yellow just out of the lid because I'm not using the other color and I'm gonna just tap around the little tip centers that are coming through the holes on the again I'm on the back side and I don't want to push it into every little crevice I, I want it to just go around the outside edge that way I it's being the resist that I want it to be where it has those folds if no paint goes in there and I'll just continue on painting all the yellow And when I'm done with that, I'll flip it back over to the front side. And I started by misting where the holes were, and I could tell that that wasn't going to do what I wanted it to do, really, so I switched to the eyedroppers. And went directly into the holes with the eyedropper, and I've used a lot of water on this. As so many of these things are, just experiment. You just need to try things out and see how they work. And you can see, I think, in some of the areas there where the yellow is drawing up, and that's great. That's what I like it to want it to do, drawing up to the front. So I fill all the holes. And then when they're all pretty well wet, I'm going to use my pointed round brush. And I do have the paint in a container, but it's full strength. I haven't watered it down because the fabric's wet. And I'm dotting in each hole, and if it drips outside the hole, that's no problem. And I'm, I'm going to go through all of them and then sort of watch and see if it draws, the, if the moisture draws it out. And then I'll just kind of play it by ear. And if it looks like it's the paint's just sitting in there and not spreading, I'll go back with the mist bottle or the eyedropper. And I know, I know for one thing, I don't want any dry area on here because the paint will just stop where the, where the uh, wet and the dry meet. So I'll go around and mist it some more. And I do, in the end, I do use an awful lot of water. It surprised me even how much the cardboard might soak up some of this moisture. And you can see as some of the paint is spreading up onto the fabrics, just what we want. I tilt the cardboard so that it makes the paint spread this way or that way. And even though there's a dry fabric up there, I do end up mis misting all of that. So now I'm going to set it out to dry. And when it's dry, you can just feel it, make sure it's all dry. I'm going to, I'm pushing those, but that's not necessary. I'm going to switch it to the, flip it to the front and pull the fabric off of the cardboard. I got a pretty design on the cardboard there. And I'm just going to kind of pop it so the paint comes away from itself. And then I'm going to iron this. Because there's thick paint on there, I'm probably, uh, I would suggest use something instead of the iron directly on there. And it's a little fiddly, you're just pulling it out. I don't really want to press uh, wrinkles into it, but I can get it wet and press them out. So I'm just trying to get it as flat as I can. And because there's not a lot of paint on the back side, I'm going to just use my iron. You may not want to do this with your best iron, 
because you never know if the paint's really thick it will stick onto the iron even if it's dry so I'm just pressing it so what you see in wrinkles is usually just the resist here it might look like it has a crease or a wrinkle but it's just the paint that left a mark on the fabric I love that really and I I usually wouldn't press it again from the front until I rinse it out but if it looks like there's a place that's not too right there needed a little something I'll just try it again don't use your good iron then I'm going to take it to the water and rinse it really well and I was really happy with the results. They look like little flowers, kind of like, like little eco-pressed flowers. I hope you liked this project. If you did, I hope you'll give it a try. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do tap the bell to get notifications for new videos. This has been Ann. Thanks a lot for watching.